thanks for being here. So ha has there been any updates as far as, you know, Julian's case or WikiLeaks that maybe people haven't been paying attention to or might have missed that you're familiar with? Well, I've been following it uh, all the way through. Uh, you know, I'm reading everything that's happening every day. Uh, of course, checking all the tweets uh, from WikiLeaks and Julian's Twitter account. Uh, I have to say, last time uh, I started the vigil with um, a bit of a um, unhappiness because I felt there wasn't enough of a movement, there wasn't enough noise. Uh, I am happy to see that uh, things are progressing well, that there are now more people uh, engaging, that Human, Human Rights Watch and other human rights organizations are now tweeting out about it uh, and that there seems to be um, uh, a groundswell now producing that really wants to see Julian uh, free, uh, Julian getting health care, getting reconnected uh, to the internet and I'm much more optimistic now uh, than I was at the last uh, vigil. That's awesome. Um, what do you, do you think that with Pence meeting with Ecuador and things like that, do you think that that's made the situation a little bit more precarious or are you just really hopeful that because of the public support it's gonna, things are gonna... Well, let's uh, be clear. So Moreno wouldn't wait a minute. If he could just kick Julian out of the embassy, he would do it. But Julian is now an Ecuadorian citizen uh, he has rights under the Ecuadorian constitution. And even though Moreno would love nothing more than kick Julian out of the embassy, uh, he can't do it without breaking his own laws. He has already broken the laws of Ecuador by completely uh, silencing Julian, um, but uh, he would have to go quite a step further uh, to abandon uh, the asylum and uh, to kick uh, a citizen of his country uh, out on the streets uh, to be extradited uh, from the UK to the United States. Um, I think that is too big a risk for him because he will be seen in his own country uh, as you know, joining the bully party with the US empire. But you can see that uh, the visit of Pence and other U.S. officials to Ecuador and their ongoing, um, uh, you know, social engineering of the Ecuadorian government uh, of, is a clear attempt to get their hands on Julian Assange and to make sure that WikiLeaks is shut down uh, and that uh, Julian gets extradited uh, to the United States where no doubt uh, he would be tried probably in secret uh, hearings because of the espionage uh, allegation uh, and they would lock him up uh, for the rest of his life. So, you know, it's really up to us uh, to keep everyone uh, on their feet, keep everyone aware that this is happening and uh, increase the movement, increase the momentum to make sure uh, that Julian uh, will not be in that situation. Right. And you've recently had your own, you know, difficulties with the U.S. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's happening now in your case? Can you give us an update on that? And I mean, I know it's not directly about WikiLeaks, but it's related. <laughs> well, I'm fighting the US government for the last six and a half years. I'm on bail for over two and a half thousand days now. Uh, the US government is trying to extradite me for, from New Zealand for uh, uh, criminal copyright infringement, even though uh, what the US is alleging to be criminal is not even a crime under New Zealand law. Uh, and there's a thing called dual criminality. You can't extradite someone for something that isn't a crime in the country from where the extradition is requested. But unfortunately, the courts uh, in this very political case, in this very uh, difficult uh, situation for New Zealand, 
against me. And once again, in the Court of Appeal, the court has found that I can be extradited, even though if you would take the U.S. indictment at face value, which you can't because it's all wrong, but even if you would, under New Zealand law, that would not constitute a crime. However, the courts have tried uh, to find ways uh, to uh, provide a path for extradition anyway. And we are now appealing the latest decision to the Supreme Court because the law couldn't be clearer. Uh, my lawyers have made excellent submissions in the Court of Appeal, which haven't even made it into the judgment. The court has just ignored uh, the um, history of the Copyright Act in New Zealand uh, and the intent of Parliament not to criminalize online infringement, especially not any kind of infringement that is secondary. Because the US government doesn't say, hey, Kim.com uploaded movies and shared them. You know, they are saying that I should be criminally responsible what the users did on our website. And that can't be right. And we'll keep fighting uh, that. But, you know, just like Julian, I'm in the same situation. You know, if the US government wants to get you, they will do whatever it takes. They don't care about the law. They don't care about international law. They don't care about treaties. You know, if you step on their toes, uh, and especially if you are a supporter of WikiLeaks, uh, you know, they will try everything to destroy you. And there's a real history of that. Uh, you know, the US government, uh, through their proceedings against uh, Aaron Schwartz, has killed a young genius simply because uh, he wrote software that made it easier for whistleblowers uh, to leak their data securely to WikiLeaks. Um, they have come after me in a civil copyright case uh, simply because I was a large financial donor uh, to WikiLeaks and I've been supporting WikiLeaks uh, financially for years. Uh, and there are many other examples of WikiLeaks supporters that are basically being uh, harassed and hunted around the world. Sorry, I muted for a minute because my dog, Wiki, is uh, losing her <laughs> again. She likes to bark when I'm on live stream and that's it, like never any other time. So here she is actually. Um, yeah, so what, what would you like to see from WikiLeaks supporters right now? Um, I mean, we, we did the, un the Unity visuals um, on the sixth anniversary, which had, it was amazing. The one in DC, we had everybody from Breitbart writers to Ray McGovern and, you know, it was just the whole entire political spectrum was covered. Um, what other things beyond protests can people be doing to help and to bring awareness to his situation and his plight? Well, I mean, the, the movement is growing. So that is the most important thing. You know, more and more people are aware of Julian's situation. They understand that after all these years in his small room in the embassy, uh, it really starts having, uh, you know, medical uh, relevance. You know, his health isn't good. Uh, he has pain in his shoulder. Uh, he, he requires a root canal treatment in one of his teeth. Um, you know, he hasn't had sunlight for uh, many, many years. He can't really walk and have fresh air. So, you know, all of these things are compounding uh, to some serious uh, health issues developing. And of course, also uh, psychologically, after all these years in that kind of confinement, uh, constantly harassed by uh, surveillance activities by both the UK and the US government and constant noise uh, that is uh, produced, you know, to harass him and, and disrupt his sleep from the neighboring units or outside uh, uh, by, you know, police making noise or things like that. So, you know, he is in a situation that can really only be described as torture. 
They are torturing him. They're trying to break, trying to walk out of there. So at least he could get some medical treatment when he gets arrested by the UK authorities. And that is, uh, you know, impossible to accept. Anyone with a sense for justice, anyone who cares about human rights needs to stand up for Julian because this is really a free speech case. You know, Julian Assange is a journalist. He's not a spy. Uh, he's not uh, anyone criminal. All he provides to the world is the truth. He wants people to know what the government uh, is doing behind our backs. The mass surveillance, the spy tools, the illegal wars that they are running, how they are lying and cheating us into uh, supporting these wars, how they are manipulating the media, you know, uh, all the lies day in, day out uh, that happen in government and the dirty politics are being exposed by WikiLeaks. And that's why he has such a big target on his head, especially from the United States. You know, make no mistake, WikiLeaks has released damaging information, but always the truth with a perfect record of many nations, not just the United States. You know, even they, they call him, uh, uh, you know, somehow a sympathizer of, of Russia and Putin. He has released information about Russia. He has information, uh, released information about Turkey, Germany, France, Italy, you name it. He doesn't pick sides. He is just uh, uh, an agent for truth. And uh, the fact that they are trying to torture him and ultimately try and kill him uh, should be, you know, very concerning to anyone who cares about his own rights. Because if they can do this to him, they will be able to do this to anybody, any journalist, anyone who makes a blog post or releases something uh, of importance to humanity. What uh, Julian Assange has done is really a great service to humanity. He has provided us insights into things that we would otherwise never know about. For example, the lies that got us into the Iraq war, or how these wars are being fought, or the lies around uh, drone attacks and how many civilians really die and how they don't even have the capability uh, to uh, you know, bomb the targets they want. They have all these casualties uh, that they call collateral damage. And uh, thousands and thousands of civilians die in these attacks without any due process, no uh, rule of law. It's completely corrupt and illegal. And if we didn't have Julian Assange, we would probably not know about a lot of these things. So anyone who stands up for Julian is standing up for free speech, is standing up for journalism, and especially if you support him, you stand up for the truth. Absolutely. I, that's very well said. So you've known Julian for quite some time now, many years, and you've you know, obviously known everybody involved in WikiLeaks. What is Julian like as a person? I feel like they kind of dehumanize him a lot um, in news reports and even in you know films and things like that. They kind of make him seem very stiff and you know almost unlikable, um, which is very different than how I've perceived him when I've met him and when I've spoke to him. Um, what have your experiences been like with him and what what do you think his personality is like? Everyone who knows Julian knows that he has a great sense of humor, that he has a charming character, that he has a big heart and he cares about justice, not just for him, but primarily for others. You know, his fight is about those that don't have a voice, and he stands up for them and provides the truth about their struggles. You know, I mean, he's a very warm, loving, and caring guy. You know, he, he may not always come across as the funniest guy because uh, of his function. You know, he is uh, an authority in matters of truth. You know, you don't want to pollute that 
with too much humor because most of the things that he is reporting are really not amusing. They are all very serious. So it's that he is a lovely human being, a, a really sweet guy, and he doesn't deserve any of this. Right. And how has it been for you to have so much support from WikiLeaks? Because, I mean, obviously you're going through your own legal issues with the United States, as we talked about. Um, you know, have, how has it been with their support? I mean, they have a big platform and they've been, you know, great for independent journalists, but also for raising awareness of other cases. I mean, they went to bat pretty hard for you, for Jeremy Hammond, for um, lots of other, other people who are in similar political persecution situations. Um, so yeah, what has it been like and what has it meant for you? Sorry, my dog. <laughs> Sorry, what platform are you talking about? Well, no, I'm just saying, you know, WikiLeaks has this great big platform on social media and they've went out of their way to support other people who are facing political persecution from, you know, mostly from the US, but anywhere really. Um, what has it meant for you to have so much support from them? They've, you know, I feel like they've been pretty actively supportive. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, Julian and I were sitting in the same boat, really. Um, the funny thing is we have the same uh, prosecutors in the Eastern District of Virginia, which is uh, the intelligence arm of the Department of Justice. Uh, you know, in that district, all the major uh, spy agencies are present. Uh, I would think the, the, the largest workforce in that district are intelligence community members. Uh, and the courts there uh, usually try, uh, you know, terrorist cases and uh, a lot of serious uh, cases that are important for the U.S. government to win. So everything is set up for them to win and it's literally the word set up is, is perfect because they commit judge shopping uh, they make sure that uh, the jury pool is infested with uh, intelligent community people uh, you know you cannot expect to get any fair hearing in those courts in that district um, uh, you know and Julian and I are uh, indicted in that same uh, district now, Julian's indictment is not public, but we all know that there is a grand jury and surely they have already, uh, you know, an, an indictment ready the moment uh, uh, the UK authorities get their hands on Julian, uh, you know, they are going to submit that uh, indictment and then they will request Julian's extradition. That is the plan. Uh, we know this from, you know, all kinds of uh, disclosures. Uh, of FOIA requests, of documents that have made it into the public domain. So, uh, you know, make no mistake, the moment Julian uh, walks out of that embassy, he uh, will be pursued uh, by the United States and they will seek uh, extradition. And they will likely get it because in the UK, you have the same situation. Just look at the judgments uh, the embarrassment of the judiciary that Julius had to, uh, Julian had to deal with recently. You know, I mean, all the judgments against him are uh, really quite uh, biased. They are not impartial. They are not even looking into his human rights. You know, they're not even looking into any of these <clears throat> health issues. So the judges, uh, just like in my case, you know, they don't care. They just want to deliver uh, to uh, their masters, you know, and in this case, the U.S. empire. No one wants to step on their toes. They all want to travel there for holidays. They may have kids in U.S. universities, you know. They know that the U.S. is pursuing anybody that is going to be in any way supportive of the people that the U.S. wants to destroy. So if you are a judge in the UK, uh, you know, you have to be a rebel. You almost have to be a revolutionary to say, I'm not going to extra extradite Julian Assange. And I have a similar situation over here in New Zealand. 
New Zealand is a vassal state of the United States. You can't see it any other way. The way they have conducted themselves here, the raid, the illegal spying against me and my family, um, you know, all the law breaking has been uncovered to the White House because Barack Obama wanted to win his second term. He needed the financial support of Hollywood. Hollywood hired a former Democratic senator to be their lobbyist, and he has applied a lot of pressure on Obama, making sure that this case happened, because otherwise Obama would not have had the financial support uh, that he needed for his uh, re-election campaign. So when, you, when you're dealing with this kind of magnitude of power, uh, trying to crush you, the individual, the, the small guy, uh, you know, it's very hard to find anyone to stand up with you, you know, to stand with you and beside you and, and, and try and uh, seek justice for you. You know, I am very lucky that I have a great legal team. These guys are working really hard. They are doing an excellent job. And, uh, you know, just after this recent judgment came out from the Court of Appeal, my lead counsel over here in New Zealand, uh, Ron Mansfield, he said he felt violated by the court. He felt that they completely ignored the submissions, that the court has put up a show in the courtroom engaging in our arguments and asking questions and ma making it look like they are getting it and they are seeing our point and they understand that that's what the law says, but then their judgment is like these people haven't even been in the courtroom, this, that all of this didn't even happen. The entire argument was completely misconstrued uh, and our submissions were ignored uh, and uh, the legislative history uh, in New Zealand was just completely ignored. And when you find yourself in a situation like that, you really can only call it one thing, and that is corruption. And the corruption is born of this power bullying game that the US empire plays around the world. And they punish anybody who goes against them. So anyone with authority to help Julian will think twice because they themselves don't want to become a target. And that is the world we are living in. This is the reality that we are living in. You cannot expect someone like Julian Assange or myself to get true justice. The rule of law doesn't apply to us. And that is really concerning. And I think more and more people need to understand this. You know, if Julian um, becomes the example of free speech being stifled and disrupted and a guy going to jail for telling us the truth. Who else do you think is ever going to step in his feet? Who else is ever going to replace WikiLeaks or Julian Assange? Nobody. Everyone will be scared. And you know, people need to understand what kind of man it takes to go through what Julian has been through. What a brave, courageous, amazing, strong man, you know, to go through all of this for all these years and stand up to this injustice and bullying and keep delivering the truth. There are very few people in this world that can do this. And Julian Assange has done it for all of us, not for any selfish reason. He's not doing it for money. He's not doing it for fame. He does it because he believes that we deserve to know the truth, to make educated decisions about who we vote for and what we can agree with, uh, you know, what the government is doing. So if we lose Julian Assange, we are fucked. There will be no one stepping in for him, you know? So if we fight for him now and we win for him, there will be other Julian Assange's. There will be more WikiLeaks. There will be more truth. So this is an epic battle that needs to be won. And everyone needs to understand this. You need to come and join us and fight for Julian. Because if we lose this fight, there's so much more we're going to lose. You don't even understand. Hey, very well said. Crazy all year.
is that Trump's own lawyers have been arguing that WikiLeaks is protected free speech. They, you know, it's self-serving because he's being sued by some former Obama lawyers, or he was because they were saying that, um, you know, he colluded with WikiLeaks or whatever. But in these filings, he points out, or his lawyer points out that free speech is the most protected during a presidential campaign under Citizens United, because that's when it is most important for people to have the truth. And so his lawyers are arguing for the self-serving purpose that WikiLeaks is protected free speech, and they're right, and they're making these great arguments. But at the same time, his administration has ramped up the attacks on WikiLeaks, and it's it's so frustrating to me because he he wants it's like the administration wants it both ways. They want to, to defend free speech and WikiLeaks when it benefits them, but they're also ramping up this persecution and making things too much harder for Julian. And it it just it it makes me furiously angry. Um, so yeah, I. I wish that people would really see this hypocrisy, and I feel like it's something that's not being talked about enough. Um, but Let me chip in there. When it comes to Donald Trump and WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, I am very disappointed in Donald Trump. Me too. When it suited him and his political campaign, he was the biggest fan of WikiLeaks. He stood up at his campaigning and told the crowd that he loves WikiLeaks. And he was pointing at the documents that WikiLeaks released that helped him. And how selfish is it of him to take all the benefit and become elected because of Julian's truth and WikiLeaks truth presented about the Hillary campaign and then treat him like a dog? You have no respect anymore, Donald Trump. You told everyone you're going to drain the swamp and you know do the right thing for the people, but you are just another puppet of the deep state. You are probably scared of the CIA and the NSA, you know, that they will come after you if you don't do what they want, you know? So it be, you become a sock puppet of those that have run US presidents for decades. You know, there's nothing happening here uh, that would be acceptable or that you can call fair or just. So Donald Trump has wreaked all the benefit of WikiLeaks and has said that he loved them and has said that, uh, you know, this information was very helpful to him. And now look what he does. You know, he shits on Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and he shits on the people that got him elected, you know, with the truth. And if, if you cannot stand up for WikiLeaks and Julian Assange simply because you are scared of all these uh, intelligence community people and because of some senators in the US that are in the pockets of the NSA and CIA and running things in the background, you know, then you are really not uh, 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 the president that you made out to be. You lied to us when you said you are going to do something for the people here. You're going to, uh, you know, be just. You're not just. You are just another extension of this bully network that has been doing all of this to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. And, uh, you know, everyone who voted for Trump needs to realize this. You can either make this point to him and say to him, look, you know, why are you doing this? We want to know the truth. We want to support you. And at the same time, we want to be able uh, to be with Julian Assange because he is the guy who got our candidate elected. And now look how you're treating him. You know, it's ridiculous. Like anyone who's supporting him needs to think about that and needs to understand that, you know, imagine you do that to, to a friend, you know, who has been uh, helping you in your case, win your case by uh, providing the truth and providing the evidence that made you win, you know? How would you feel if, if that person who did that uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know,
You don't care about that person anymore and you go after him just like uh, he's a dog. And you don't care about his health. You don't care about his well-being. This guy has children. He has a family. He has friends who love him, you know. And you keep him locked up in this little hole because you're, you're putting him in a situation where he can't leave that place. And you know what? I spend a lot of time trying to get some attention uh, for Julian. You know, I spend a lot of time with Sean Hannity. I spend a lot of time with people that are really close in the inner circle with his own son, Donald J. You know, I'm, I'm messaging and, 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 and talking to those people and I'm reminding them what Julian has done for them, but they're not doing anything. You know, because they're all scared. They're all little chickens that are scared of the NSA and the CIA and what they might do to them if they actually let the truth teller go free. You know, so is Donald Trump really a president when he said that he lost WikiLeaks, when he appreciated the truth coming out, but now he does nothing? What a hypocrite. What a liar. I mean, you know, I, it's I, lies. I, I, it's like, why, who are you lying to us like that? Right. You know? I mean, I, I personally voted for Trump. Um, a lot of people know this. I'm, I was a big, I, I am a big Trump supporter. But I get so, it's so hard to take him seriously because he'll go to these rallies and he'll be like, the fake news this, the fake news that. We need real news. But then he doesn't speak out for the only publisher who has never had to issue a retraction apology or you know uh, uh, who is has a perfect record you know it it's horrible <laughs> it just it frustrates me so much like he he campaigned on draining the swamp and going after the deep state and nobody has been going after the swamp and the deep state harder than Julian Assange um nobody has published more real news than Julian Assange. He's published more truthful publications in the last 10 years than all of our legacy media combined probably ever. And so it's great and it's funny when Trump goes after the fake news and you know, points at CNN and calls them you know, ridiculous, but it means nothing if you're not supporting real news and real journalists. And we don't have a better example of that than Julian Assange, who he is letting rot in an embassy right now. Um, yeah, it's, I, for me as a Trump voter, it's very hard to watch this happen. Um, and I know, you know that- I, I believe, I believe Donald Trump likes Julian. I don't think he has any problem with Julian. And I think he is grateful for what WikiLeaks has done for him. But he doesn't have the balls to follow through and help the man who got him into the presidency. If it wasn't for Julian and the truth that he released about crooked Hillary, he would never have won. So how can you be so ungrateful? You know, just really do what you promised. Drain the swamp. You are now part of the swamp by doing these things against Julian. You complain about the fake news, but you are doing nothing to stop the fake news with the truth. That is what Julian does. Julian is the opposite of fake news. He is real news, real truth, facts, documents that uh, have never been proven to be wrong. Any release of WikiLeaks is authentic and true. You know, how the hell can someone who screams about fake news all day long and makes a million tweets about that not support the one guy who's telling the world the truth? What a bloody idiot are you, Trump? Right. And, and the other thing is, like, he could pardon him instantly. Like, it would be no problem. He is scared. Him. He and, is a pussy, Trump. And Trump is a like, pussy. Well, Scared. He should do the right thing, but he's scared, you know, just like any president before him. He is dealing with powers with the deep state that are running things. Just look at him. They are making him jump through hoops. The, the Mueller investigation, what a joke. He has no real power. That is the truth. 
the president of the United States is a powerless little puppy. Look at the show that they are pulling. And ultimately, I think they will impeach him. They'll get rid of him because he didn't have the balls and the courage to be bold, like he told everyone. You know, why can't you be bold, like do the things that you said you would do, especially for the one guy who has contributed most to your election? You know, it's yeah. outrageous that Trump is, uh, is really just another puppet. And, uh, you know, voters need to realize this. If you were hoping that Trump is coming and, and doing all these beautiful things that he promised us, just look at the first year. It's a joke, you know? Nothing has happened. Right. And he told the word, we're, we're, we're done fighting foreign countries. We are going to do America first, America first. His number one fucking sentence was we're focusing on America first. Yet he bombs Syria. He helps Saudi Arabia uh, doing war in Yemen. He, 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 he wants to go to war with Iran now. You know, I mean, what a fucking loser telling us uh, America first. Yet here we are, global conflicts expanding foreign policy hasn't changed one bit and now he starts a global trade war with china the eu canada all of his allies like how is he thinking that is going to play out you know the whole world has had different expectations of trump his promises were that he is going to focus on his country yet here we are uh, you know, thousands of people dying around the world because the U.S. military uh, still conducts their illegal operations and, uh, you know, none of the things that he said he's going to do, uh, he has done. And it's, it's a huge disappointment. And people just have to call it out for what it is, you know. He had a year, I've been looking at him, you know, and all he really cares about is his ego. It's what people think about him. You know, if there are haters out there, he's, he's not happy. He likes everyone to love him, but no one loves him because he doesn't do what he said he would do. So he's now not only pissed off the left, he's going to piss off his own supporters because he's not coming through on his promises. And one of the easiest thing he could do to become a global hero for free speech is to let Julian Assange go. Give him his health care, let him see his children, reconnect him to the internet, and shut the fuck up, U.S. Empire bullshit. Yeah. All right? I spoke to a lot of people who are in the administration and in Senate, and the one thing that they always say to me, they're like, we believe that, that you know Trump doesn't dislike Julian, but the optics would be so bad. That's always what they say to me, the optics, the optics, because of the Mueller, or Mueller investigation. And it, I just look at them and I'm like, these people who would care about it would never vote for Trump anyway. Why does he care? Why does he care what these people who are going to hate him no matter what he does? Why does he care how it looks to them? Well, you know, the, the funniest they, thing is, the funniest thing is, Hillary Clinton was the deep state candidate. Mm -hmm. They wanted her so bad because she would just continue with the same uh, uh, easy manipulation that they could uh, do with Obama. You know, they had it all lined up. They were sure Hillary would win. And now the disruptors in their midst and they have two strategies. Number one is let's try and get rid of him. Number two is in parallel, let's try and social engineer him, scare him so that he will do and comply with what we want, you know? And ultimately you will see a Trump who doesn't, who doesn't care about any of the things he promised or, or draining the swamp, who cares about himself and his family and how he will be affected if the deep state uh, keeps going after him. You know, he had a really tough year with this whole Mueller thing and Russia, 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 day in, day out, he got bombarded. And these are the people 
the intelligence community that is doing this that are telling him you cannot do anything for Julian Assange. If you do that, you lose us. And you know what he doesn't get? He's already lost them. They're not on his side. They fucking hate him. They want to get rid of him tomorrow, you know? So why the hell is he supporting them and not doing the right thing for Julian Assange? It's idiotic. And anyone with half a brain can see what's going on. It's just stupid. You can really judge somebody's character, I think, by how they stand up for the people who have stood with them. And right now, you know, we have Manafort, whether you agree, like whether you think he's this horrible criminal or not, he's in solitary confinement. For what? <laughs> like for working with Trump and trying to get Trump elected. I mean, these financial crimes or whatever, they would have never, ever, ever been something that he would be in jail for had he not worked for Trump and Trump is letting him sit in prison. Flynn lost his, he's losing his house. He has to sell his house because of this witch hunt and Trump has done nothing to intervene. And I think that it really speaks to his character that he's letting all these people who helped him to get elected, who are now being targeted because they helped to get him elected. But here's the important thing. Here's the important thing, Cassandra. All of this is happening because of the illegal surveillance that happened under the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. They illegally surveilled Flynn, then they unmasked him illegally, then they leaked it to the press illegally. This very deep state that hates Julian so much is doing everything to destroy Trump. And he is so naive to think that if I just play along and if I go and bomb Syria and I do all these things that they asked me to do, that maybe they would back off and just let me be president, you know? And how naive is that? I mean, all these people around him, this inner circle that is being destroyed and picked apart one by one, including his own personal uh, counsel who has been with him for 20 plus years, you know? They are all going under, they are losing all of their money, all of their assets fighting uh, because they have supported Trump. And Trump should know firsthand what it means for people being targeted by the deep state simply because they supported someone. I am in this situation that I'm in because I supported WikiLeaks financially. Do you think there would ever been a, a copyright case like mine with a military style raid and all of that if it wasn't about WikiLeaks? You know, they want to destroy people. The deep state wants to kill people that go against them and that they don't like. And they are doing the same thing to Donald Trump that they have been doing to supporters and the inner circle of WikiLeaks. And Trump is so naive. Frankly, it's so disappointing that he is so naive and such a baby that he can't see this and do the right thing. Have some courage, man. Have get Grow some balls, man. This guy got you elected with the truth and you want to uh, put him in jail for the Espionage Act? You are an idiot, you know? Really, like wake the fuck up. The people who Julian is fighting are the same enemies that you are fighting. They're the same people that are causing all this problem around the world, including to you and people who supported you, Trump. You know, don't play their game. Kick them in the butt. You are the president. Show that you are the president. Don't be another sock puppet for these people. They are criminals. They lie to the world. They kill people around the globe so that they can sell more rockets and bombs to the military industrial complex. You know, they all want to make money, fill their pockets with wars and fighting and conflict and the war on terror. It's all fucking bullshit, you know? Just wake the fuck up and do, do the right thing. Because, you know, we need to return to a place where the truth matters where the truth is better than the lies, not the other way around, where the honesty and openness is better than the secrets and the hiding. Like, what the fuck are you doing, you idiots? You know, wake up.
We're living in a world that is really going to shit. How are we ever going to prevent World War III or a mass casualty event in this world if we have people cares, which is what it is. This is how it goes, you know? Right. There's no rule of law, no justice, no free speech, no human rights. It's all getting fucked for wars and, and, and building out the security apparatus and making the deep state more powerful by keeping us dumb and by keeping us in conflicts, because that's the only way these people are relevant. If there would be no terrorist attacks, if there would be no foreign policy that leads to wars and conflict, all these people would be working at Walmart, you know? They would all be working in normal jobs. They would not be sitting there spying on everybody, the entire world population, including world leaders, allies of the United States. There's hundreds of thousands of people working in the intelligence community in the United States spying on the world to create more problems to make more money. This is the reality. These people are the biggest criminals and crooks the world has ever seen. So I believe Trump knows that. In his heart, he knows that. And one of his best friends in life who has been standing by him all this time is Sean Hannity. And Sean Hannity, every day on his show, talks about the deep state and talks about the corruption and the agencies and uh, uh, the government departments that are so rogue and so crooked that they are now openly breaking the law and no one is holding them to account. Like, what is the president for if he can't even stop these things, you know? Right, exactly. And uh, there's a good reason why Sean Haunt Hannity is talking about these things on the show. You know, look, he's biased, no question about it. He, he speaks for his president and his party, no question about it. But in the process, he also reveals the truth about who is really running the show and how we're being lied to and how the U.S. president is undermined by the deep state. The deep state is in his mouth, Sean Hannity's mouth, every night on his show. He's hammering them, he's educating the U.S. population, and that's the good thing. That's the really good thing because despite all of this negative stuff that is going on. That is the good thing because people are now aware of what's going on. They are getting it. They understand that, you know, Trump is in a hard place. It's not easy for him to make this, these decisions and to follow through on his promises because they are threatening. You know, they are very dangerous. They will kill to achieve uh, their outcomes, you know. They are criminals. There's no other word for them. They are criminals and they are the most diabolical, evil people on the planet who have absolutely no compassion for a guy like Julian, a human being, a nice guy. And all he does is run a website that tells the truth. They have no compassion. If he would die tomorrow, these fuckers would have a party. Well, let's not give them that party. You know, they shouldn't have a party dancing on Julian's corpse. We should be dancing on their fucking corpses. Hey, These right. idiots, you know? Can you and I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, on fire today I because like I think it's enough with the sweet talk, you know? We got to talk some real sense into people. Yeah. You, it's all happening under your own nose. You can see it with your own eyes. You can read it. Educate yourself. These people are the, the, you know, the most evil people in the world. And if we don't fight for Julian and if we don't fight them, they are going to destroy our lives. They're going to destroy our world for us and our children, you know, because these people are idiots. All they care about is an accumulation of power and money. They don't care about people. They kill people every day. And it doesn't even, sh they don't shed a tear. They, they sleep without nightmares. They don't even care about this shit. They, they torture people, you know? And then they get 
elected to be the head of the CIA, a torturer who was there when people were waterboarded and someone lost their eye because they stuck some shit in it and you know people died. And boom, Trump makes her the head of the CIA. I mean, how fucking stupid can you be? These people are criminals. You don't want to reward criminals with promotions, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm fired up today. I got to tell you, you know, I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be uh, sad. And these things, uh, you know, we, we just need to work together to make sure that more and more people get it. But we have now penetrated the mainstream. You know, with Sean Hannity and others following up on these stories, the American citizens are waking up to not being able to trust the media, not being able to trust the government, and especially the people in the shadows that are really running things, the top 1%, the elites, you know, that don't give a damn about the people. They just want to enrich themselves more, protect what they have, increase what they have at all costs. And if it means that you get half your salary and you can't afford a Medicaid plan, you can't afford health care, you will not, you know, you will not have a retirement money if you if you get to 65, you'll be broke. This is how it is, guys. The 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 top one percent want to rip you off. And right now, Trump is allowing them to do that, you know? So he needs to step up and, and fulfill his promises. I don't know if he will ever, ever see this. I'm sure Sean will have a look at it. But, you know, it's got to be said. This is not good enough, Trump. You got to do fucking better. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the outcry if, like, Julian was any other publisher in the world? There would be, you know, senators and like congressmen and every NGO ever, every human rights organization ever, they would be going absolutely insane. And nobody, like, it just feels like nobody is taking this seriously. And it, it, it's not even just Trump. It's like everyone. It's, you know, human rights organizations and everyone. <laughs> it, it, it makes me insane. If this was any other person, there would be international outcry until he was released. And I feel like Trump isn't having the, the amount of pressure on him that there should be. Like people need to be screaming, like you need to do something, this is torture. Well, and it's coming, okay? Trump is still fresh in his presidency. You can see that he tries a few things. You know, I like this whole North Korea thing, but I think it's more, you know, unfortunately, it's 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 just nice PR. What have they actually accomplished, you know, since that big summit? Like, where are the results? Where's the agreement that says, yeah, North Korea welcomes international inspectors to, uh, you know, make sure that they are not building nuclear bombs anymore? You know, it's it's all a big show, unfortunately, you know? And more needs to happen. We need to uh, uh, tell Trump these things. Uh, he's still in his honeymoon period. Let's call it the honeymoon period, right? It's, he's so fresh to his presidency. All his supporters are still believers. And they are very tribal. The moment I make a tweet saying, oh, maybe that whole thing with... Uh, uh, Stormy Daniels or, you know, lying, uh, you know, to the media and, you know, things that have happened that didn't really look good, that didn't really look like leadership. You know, the moment I make a tweet like that, his followers are going, whoa, fuck you, you know, how can you attack our idol with the truth? Fuck the truth. We don't want the truth. We want Trump, you know? I mean, it's idiotic how people think these days. You, 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 if you want a candidate to succeed and to be a good president for you, you need to um, uh, honor the truth. You know, the truth is the one uh, measure how you can judge a person to be a leader or a loser. <laughs> As someone who lies to his citizens, as the president of the United States, it's not a leader, it's a loser, you know? 
but someone who tells the truth and supports the truth and honors the truth is someone that deserves to be a president, you know? And here's the thing, this honeymoon period will be over soon. And Trump better finds a way to deliver on his promises because if he doesn't, uh, come 2020, he will be gone. You know, he has only one and everyone in America needs to understand this because the truth that came from WikiLeaks split the Bernie Sanders and the Hillary Clinton camp. It split them and Bernie Sanders supporters, most of them didn't vote and some of them in protest voted for Trump. <laughs> now he has this one time opportunity to really show the people that he is the guy he said he would be. And if he doesn't do that, he will be gone. But the good news is because he has been elected and he has been seen as a disruptor, the fake news media has exposed itself, the deep state has exposed itself, and now we are all aware, you know? And that is a very powerful thing because with this knowledge, the next election, we're going to be even better in uh, electing an outsider, a total outsider, this time not a billionaire who cares more about his ego than his people, but someone who's actually there for the people, you know? And then the deep state and the fake media will have a really hard time electing their candidates because we are all aware now that it's really one big shitty system of lies. And we will be looking for candidates that have absolutely nothing to do with the mainstream parties anymore. So I believe that when this honeymoon period is over and Trump keeps not delivering what he promised, his supporters are going to wake up and realize that he has become what any president has become before him since World War II, a puppet of the deep state, too scared, too cowardly to do the things that people would expect from their president. And especially the most important thing that you would expect from a president is that he will protect the truth, protect the truth teller and not attack the people that are actually responsible for him being in his position, for having had a chance to make change in the US. He was given a chance to make that happen. And look, he's not doing it. He's simply not doing it. And anyone who thinks, oh yeah, give him more time, da da da, well, he's had a year. And what has he done? Very little. Right. I think that he needs to be confronted by his supporters online, in person, wherever, all the time about the fact that his own lawyers have argued that WikiLeaks has broken no laws. Like it, this is so important because he, they made such a good case for WikiLeaks. They brought up, you know, the Bartnicki First Amendment test, which says that publishing truthful information, as long as you are not the one who stole it, even if it's illegal obtained, is protected under the First Amendment. This, he needs to be confronted by this all the time because he can't use, he can't defend himself by saying that WikiLeaks is not illegal and then still allow his administration to continue the persecution. I think that that is just, the simplest thing like point blank end of story like your lawyers said that they have broken no laws so let him go like let him the fuck out of the embassy <laughs> and that's I, I feel like it's just that simple like people yeah. need to go and slam that lawsuit down in front of them and be like look this is what you and your team have said about WikiLeaks so get him out now <laughs> like, I think I think there's something that we can do <clears throat> I think there's something that we can do to ele elevate Julian uh, in a way that will not allow the US to continue with the attacks and will not allow the United Kingdom to be that little puppy uh, lapdog of the United States uh, bullying uh, Julian for them. And that one thing 
as crazy as this may sound, is we should all write to the Nobel Prize Committee and we should all say that if any person in this world deserves a Nobel Peace Prize, service to the truth, for his service to free speech, for revealing war crimes. Those idiots in Norway gave the Nobel Peace Prize to Obama and he dropped more bombs on people than Bush in his eight years. Can you believe this? They gave Obama the Nobel Peace Prize and he dropped more bombs on people than George W. Bush. Yeah. Now, if the Nobel Committee wants to have any kind of you know, seriousness about them, if they want to be respected around the world, well, nominate Julian Assange and give him the Nobel Peace Prize. And then it's not going to be any longer just a, a, a Julian Assange, a rebel truth teller. It's going to be the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Julian Assange, who is being harassed and bullied by the biggest war criminal in the world today, the United States. That is going to shift the debate completely. And I ask all followers of Julian, everyone who is watching right now, everyone who's going to view this video later when it's being put together, write to the Nobel uh, Committee. Let them know about what's happening to Julian, that now is their time that they can really show that they truly care about peace, that they care about the truth. Because this is now a time where action is required. And they have made a big mistake giving Barack Obama the peace prize. And they know it. They bloody well know it over there in Norway. So let's just remind them how they have lost their way. And let's see that they nominate and elect Julian Assange or name Julian Assange the Nobel Peace Prize winner. And you will see how this whole climate of bullying is going to change. You know, no longer will he be the one who is accused of having committed crimes because he hasn't. Everybody knows it's a deep state plot to discredit him. All the allegations against him are wrong, have been proven to be wrong. And Sweden ultimately had to drop their bogus case against him. You know, it's time for, you know, giving Julian what he deserves, the recognition that he deserves for exposing war criminals, for exposing uh, the truth about what's really going on in the world. And but when he gets that, if he gets that, they will have to cease. They will have to stop because he is going to be elevated to a whole new level of importance, you know? Yeah. And I haven't heard that proposed very often that we need to be, you know, going after the Nobel but that's a fantastic idea. And I absolutely hope that people start doing that. Um, we have Mark Crispin Miller waiting to join us right now. So is there any final thoughts that you wanted to add before we switch over? Well, I don't know if Julian can see this. I think uh, he is still unable to uh, connect, but if one of his lawyers goes and visits him in the next few days, and is watching this, please tell him that he is being loved around the world, that the movement is growing, that we will keep fighting for him, and that he needs to remain strong. We need him to be stronger and more courageous than ever. Do not give up because they are increasing the pressure on you. Our message to you is we will set you free, Julian Assange. We will fight for you until you are a free man. And we will fight for the truth. 
and that truth truth tellers will be respected and honored and not hunted uh, like criminals. This is what I want Julian's lawyers to do. Tell him this. Maybe write it down word for word and tell him I said this and that he will be fine. I promise he will be fine. Oh, thank you so much. That was an incredible speech and incredible to hear all your thoughts on that.